Um, so uh, let's talk about this uh, this trade war that's been going on a little bit with uh, China. And I guess I'd like to ask you, do you think that Donald Trump was right in calling out the Chinese government and basically putting them on notice? I won't have any comment on on on, on that. I mean, uh, in terms of political uh, uh, activity, I don't put my citizenship in a blind, a blind trust. So when the election comes around, I'll, I'll, I'll do something. On the other hand, uh, people will interpret things I say about any any president, you know, as to some extent coming from Berkshire, and they and they don't come from Berkshire. You know, I'm just an individual, so I, I, I uh, you know, I think. Uh, Glad to talk about China, but I can't, I can't talk to you about that part of it. Fair enough. I mean, do you think there was room for improvement then in terms of the trade relationship between China and the United States? Well, I think that China and the United States absolutely are destined to be the superpowers, you know, of beyond my great grandchildren' uh, lives, and and will always have be competitors, and will be competitors in. In business, we'll give competitors and ideas, all kinds of ways, and there's no other way it would be. And we just have to make sure that that competition doesn't get get us to a point where we don't realize that the best world is one in which both the United States and China prosper. I mean, they're, they're, we do not want to have an island of prosperity in the rest of the world, uh, envious of us in a in a nuclear age. And, and China doesn't, Russia doesn't. I mean, we all re recognize the dangers of letting competition get out of control and, and, and become, you can, you can be competitors without being enemies. And, and that's, that's what all powerful nations have to realize over time. I mean, it's different than 200 years ago when you could have some dominant uh, country. And then, the, they may have done some things that you didn't like, but it didn't threaten the existence of the world. You really threaten the existence of the world, uh, uh, as we know it, if important countries do not constantly recognize that they can compete, and they can fight over certain things, but they can't regard it as essentially the equivalent of war. Here's a question from Kevin Chen, who is a Berkshire shareholder and an NYU professor. And he says, and this is sort of along the lines of what you were just saying, Warren, but do you think that U.S. and China will be able to resolve their differences or are conflicts unavoidable? Well, I don't think conflicts are unavoidable, but I think, I think it has to be active thinking on the part of every hugely powerful country. And, and Russia is hugely powerful. I mean, 90 percent of the nuclear arms in the world are between U.S. and Russia. So uh, they... They have to recognize that the best world for them is uh, one where they don't try and grab all the apples, basically. And, and we have to recognize that. And, and, and we can't, in the United States, we, we can't think that either our ideas run the world, you know, or uh, uh, we start getting aggressive about things, and China can't think that, and Russia can't think that. And, and, and that's obvious. You just have to make things. You got to be sure things don't escalate. Uh, you know, that World War One. You know, with an archduke. You know, I mean, you get, you get these, you can get chance incidents, and and you really want to. Uh, I asked one of the presidents one time. You know, in terms of what he would do if he awakened in the middle of the night with somebody coming to him and saying, "Absolutely," you know, somebody else has launched. You know, and would you launch on that? And you've got. Ten minutes at the side, and I wouldn't want to have that responsibility. But, but you want to make sure you don't get to that point. Right, right. Would you ever make a big acquisition in China? And if not, aren't you missing a huge portion of? The yeah, the world answer is we perfect? would. Yeah, we would. Have you looked? Uh, we've been made aware of things, some things. Yeah. Are you concerned, um, on the flip side of the coin, are you concerned that the rule of law is different, that uh, the accounting might be opaque? Well, I'd, I'd, wa I'd want to be sure I understood the accounting, obviously. In some businesses, that'd be easier to do than others. But, but I know the laws, the customs, uh, the accounting, the people, 
better in the United States than any place else. So there's some small hurdle in, in many countries to get over, which I can get over. I mean, but I, but I just don't, it's just not as easy as looking at something where I already know the answer, you know, from previous transactions or something of the sort. So, so it, it, it's easier uh, to make a big acquisition in the United States. I have to do more work uh, if I'm looking beyond the borders, but I love the idea of doing it. Uh, when we made the acquisition in Israel a dozen years ago, you know, I didn't know what the tax rates were there. I didn't, I didn't know what corporate law. You know, I was, I, I suspected that it would all be answered satisfactorily, which it was, but I didn't just automatically know it. It seems like you're more open I, about doing a deal in China than in previous conversations. I don't had. think so. No, uh, no I. Uh, no, it, no, I, 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 it's I, out I'm, there. I'm open. Yeah, right. I, I, we okay. we made, you know, we made two decent sized stock acquisitions there, and that worked out fine. Those and, are well, PetroChina and yeah. BYD. BYD, yes. Yeah, uh, BYD China. was Charlie's, but right. Charlie's yeah. very well versed on China. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, the the trade, the U.S. trade deficit has been widening, and of course, a lot of that has to do with our trade with China. Is that something that worries you? Well, I wrote an article about it for Fortune and the, the, the trade situation many years ago and when, when our deficit got to be large in relation to GDP. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, essential to have a trade balance, but I, I, I think that if a trade deficit gets large and, and it looks like you have no way out from it, that that can be a real problem over time. I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're shipping little pieces of paper to the rest of the world and they're shipping you goods. I mean, people are working, making underwear or shoes someplace, and they get little pieces of paper from us. And it gets very tempting if you've done that enough to make sure that those little pieces of paper aren't worth very much over time <laughs> when, they, when they want to cash them for something. So and you don't want to have, we don't have any problem running trade deficits, but, but if we ran really large ones and we sort of worked ourselves into a box where they were we didn't really have a solution to get the, the numbers down. It could be a problem, and I wrote about it one time. But uh, it's it's kind of a nice thing, actually. Just I mean, wouldn't you like to have something where you just send out little pieces of paper and somebody keep supplying you with your food or your? You know, I'm you living might. it. You're all right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yes. we call them credit cards yeah, in the United right. States. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and last question: uh, China is facing its slowest growth in nearly three decades. The leadership there lowered the targets, I think, to around uh, six point five percent, six percent. Are you concerned about this slowing growth and the impact on global markets? Well, I don't worry about in terms of global markets. I mean, uh, China's going to grow a lot uh, over time. I mean, they, when you think of what's happened, well, this is 1949 or whatever, you know, but there's been nothing really like it. I mean, you, know, you, you had 20% of the world's population at that time, perhaps, uh, and it really hadn't remotely achieve their potential. I mean, they had the intellectual capacity, they had a, a decent soil, all kinds of things. I mean, and, 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 and what's happened there almost is beyond belief. And, and that game's not over, but we've had incredible developments in the United States. I mean, you know, real GDP per capita is six times what it was the day I was born in the United States. Six times. And we thought we were a pretty developed country then and everything. Uh, no, my parents wouldn't have believed it. I mean, they, they would have thought, you know, that uh, this kid has really got it made, you know, <laughs> make more in the United States, and it, it was true. I mean, we had this tailwind, and and China's had a hurricane behind it, you know, in, in the in recent decades. In a good way. Absolutely. Uh, uh, because you were comparing it to the tailwind of the yeah. hurricane no, at your uh, back. Uh, yeah, at their back, and 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 they've they have found a way of life that is dramatically different than existed for the billion, there was a billion then, maybe maybe a billion, two or three, whatever it is now, and, and they have changed uh, a country really of size that's, I don't think there's ever been anything like it. We've done it too, but it took a, took, took somewhat longer. I mean, it was, it was a more stretched out, it was a remarkable period, but, but uh, you know, when you go to, 
I first went there in 1995, uh, and then they regarded it as a miracle. And then I went back <laughs> 10 years later, and it was a whole different country beyond that. <laughs> Warren Buffett, thanks very much.